Hello everyone, my name is Atit Shah and I'm your Nationwide Annuity Wholesaler. Today, what I'm here to talk to you about is a multi-layered approach to trust planning. But before I get into anything that's on the board, I want to talk a little bit about taxation. For an individual to be in the highest tax bracket, it takes over $400,000 in earned income. For a trust to be in the highest tax bracket, it takes $12,500 in earned income. So let's pause there and take a step back. Let's assume that we have a million dollar trust. A million dollar trust is at least going to earn a percent and a half, even with the low interest rate environment that we're in right now. So the question really comes into play is, why are we putting trust assets into taxable investments? Two options you may want to consider are municipal bonds and a deferred variable annuity. Municipal bonds will offer you that principal protection. What you're sacrificing is the growth potential, and you run the risk of a rising interest rate environment that we currently are in today. The second option is a deferred variable annuity. So let's take a look at a specific case. Let's assume we have a trust where the mom is the grantor, the son is the beneficiary, and the contingent beneficiary are the grandchildren. When you're talking to the trustee, ask them, what are these assets intended for? Is it so when mom passes away, the son can have cash? Or is it that the son wants this to supplement his retirement income? So let's take a look at the first one. Let's say upon mom passing, son wants cash. What we can do is we can purchase an annuity with the trust as the owner and mom as the annuitant. What this does is give the trust tax deferred growth and because we're annuitant driven, triggers a death benefit when mom passes away. Now what you can pair this with is a 5% combination enhanced death benefit. At worst case scenario, this million dollar trust grows to $2 million in 15 years based on the rule of 72. Now what you're able to do is you're able to invest these assets on the risk tolerance of the beneficiary. Because the beneficiary is younger and has a longer time horizon, you're able to get aggressive with your investments and try to go ahead and beat this 5% guarantee. Now, let's say that son doesn't want cash. Let's say that son wants this to supplement his retirement income. What we can do is we can purchase an annuity with the trust as the owner and the son as the annuitant. What we can pair this with is our 7% lifetime income rider. So what this does is our million dollar trust will grow to $1.7 million at worst case scenario, unless the market does better. Now this is during the accumulation phase. Let's say mom passes away and we're entering the payout phase for the son. What we do here is we re-register the policy with the son as the owner and the son as the annuitant. What this is called is an in-kind distribution of trust assets. And as long as the beneficiary of the trust is the annuitant on the original policy, we're able to re-register the contract as a son as the owner and son as the annuitant without incurring a taxable event. Now think about the power of that. You've passed assets over an entire generation without incurring a taxable event because of the IRS private letter ruling. Now, let's talk a little bit about the payout. Son is age 65 and says, I want to go ahead and turn this on for income. With our lifetime income rider, you're guaranteed a 5.35% distribution at age 65. This $1.7 million now will generate $91,000 in income for your clients. That's a 9.1% distribution on the original million dollar investment that you're going to go ahead and create a stream of income that the beneficiary can outlet. Think about the power of passing assets over an entire generation, but also creating a stream of income that the clients can't outlive. Now eventually, the son will pass away. And what you're able to do is go ahead and do a non-qualified stretch. Let's assume we have $500,000 left in the contract and $250,000 of that is cost basis. If the clients go ahead and take a lump sum distribution, they're most likely gonna get into a higher tax bracket and face taxes on $250,000 in gains. What we're able to do is we can name the grandchildren as the owner and the grandchildren as the annuitant. And we stretch this over their entire life expectancy and we're able to turn this $500,000 into over $1.2 million over that entire generation. Now think about the power of that. You created a strategy that not only passes assets over an entire generation, but also keeps assets on the books. For you guys, that means that the beneficiaries are walking away and taking a lump sum distribution. So today, 
what I want to do is I want to sit down with each and every one of you and I want to see which strategy fits best for each client that you're talking about with trust assets. Thank you for your time today.